In this video I'll be building some tire racks for overhead garage door storage in my garage because I'm running out of space. To do this I got some 2x4s, some 2x4 hangers. I have these ever built wire rope clamps. They are terrible. I would not buy ever built again. I got 1 8 inch steel wire rope. I have GRK structural screws rated to 840 pounds. I have these uh, number 8 nails. I have a couple long eyelets, a couple short eyelets, and then I have these adjustable clamps. Obviously, you're gonna want a tape measure and some stuff to cut wood, maybe have a coffee as well. So the first thing I'm gonna do is measure sort of how wide I think this whole thing is, and 50 inches is about right. When I look at my two by four wall inside the garage, I'm gonna take it to about 56 inches, so I want three inches of overhang on either side and there you can see above the garage door where this thing is going to go. So I got about three feet of space to work with between the garage door and the ceiling. So I've cut two boards to 56 inches and one board to 50 inches. I'm just roughly measuring how far apart I want the boards to hold the tires and I'm going to go with 14 and 3 quarters for where the tire is going to sit and then I have a four inch offset. So I'm making a spacer board and that'll pretty much dictate the size of this whole thing. I'm just going to use a few construction screws, not the actual structural ones, just to tack this together before I start using the 2x4 joist hangers. Now I do put the smaller board in, but I uh, subsequently take it out because it was in the way of the joist hangers and I put it back in later. I don't think I show that in the video, but uh, just for full disclosure. So these hangers are, are outstanding. Obviously the screws are really going to help hold it together, so I do most of my work by myself. I don't have people to help me. I take these number 8 nails and just tack in where the holes are in the joist hangers. So on these ones, they have two on each side to nail into the one two by four. And there's two that go on an angle to hold the supported board in place so it doesn't pull back. And I'm gonna use these joist hangers on every single two by four connection on this thing. So there you can see the frame made. Now before I put it on the wall, I'm going to drill holes where the small eyelets are going to go. And I'm going to use these eyelets to hold the steel wire rope that is going to secure this to the wall. So you see the small eyelet. Obviously the size of eyelet you'd buy is going to dictate the size of the hole you're going to need. Then put a large wash on the back side so that the nut doesn't pull through if you when you tighten it up. So you can see a pretty simple frame. And you can see the two eyelets that are going to hold the steel wire rope so the side that's away from the wall doesn't start drooping down once you put the tires on it. Now I'm going with initially 32 inches from the ceiling to where I'm going to put the tire rack, which I do find out is uh, too low the hard way, but I'll show you that in a second. So I'm going to mark the 32 inches on one board and with the level just come across and mark where 32 inches off the ceiling is just so that this is going to sit level. <laughs> These structural screws are great. Obviously very strong and great holding power and I'm using three and a half inch ones. So I'm going to tack it into place using these structural screws and then give it a test run and you're going to find that I put this too low and boom. So Obviously the garage door impacted it because I didn't take into consideration that the garage door actually goes a little bit higher than that metal bar when it's coming up and over the, the turn. So after I raised it another four inches, second time is the charm and you can see the garage door opens with the tire rack above it, no problem. And yes, my garage is extremely messy. So now that I'm confident that it's in the right place, I'm just going to take these structural screws and basically I'm just putting in eight structural screws, two into each two by four. Now I'm drilling two holes into the double top plate in the garage wall. I'm using that to secure 
the eyelets on either side of the, the frame as well. And you can see why I made it a little bit larger. And that's just to allow for that eyelet to be outside of the tire rack itself. So the steel wire rope is going to go up on an angle and prevent the front end of the tire rack from drooping down. Now I'm going to measure off my steel wire rope and essentially I'm going to make two loops. So I'm cutting my first one at 18 inches. These side cutters are not the thing to use. If you got something bigger, you're definitely going to want to do that. However, I do get through it eventually. So like I said, I'm going to cut two loops per side. So I'll cut the first two at 18 inches. I do own bolt cutters, I just can't find them. So the wire goes through the wire clamp, then either through the eyelet, if you're going through the eyelets, or in this case, the adjustable connector, and then back through the wire clamp. And then I'm taking a eight millimeter socket and clamping it down. Now the problem I had with these ever built wire clamps was that the nuts kept stripping and I probably half the box I threw in the garbage. I ended up going to Lowe's and getting a different brand and they all work great. So generally speaking, you want more than one. Um, and in fact, they're recommending two to three clamps per piece. I went with two. And you can see the setup there with the adjustable connector. Now going to the front end of the tire rack, sort of same deal. Put the clamp on, going through that eyelet, and then feeding the wire rope back through the clamp, and then taking again the 8mm socket and tightening everything down. I do want to stress that you. I do end up using two to three clamps per loop of rope. So every time you see a connector, there will be another connector going in there as well. The second connector is actually from Lowe's and not these ever built ones. The brand that I got from Lowe's was something called Blue Hawk and I didn't have a single nut strip out. But on these ever builts, I would say 10 nuts completely destroyed. Okay, now that I've got my first piece of wire rope connected to the eyelet and the adjustable connector. All I have to do now is make my second chunk of steel wire rope to go from the wall to the adjustable connector as well. In this case I'm measuring it out to be about 22 inches. So I'll just cut the piece of steel wire rope accordingly and then connect the steel wire rope to the eyelet up on the wall using the same procedure mentioned before. Now I'll connect that to the adjustable connector And then this will be the last wire clamp I'm putting in on this side as I get everything sorted out and leveled off. So there you go. Two pieces of steel wire rope connected to an eyelet on the ceiling, an eyelet on the rack, and then I'll use this adjustable connector to tighten everything up. And I'm going to keep tightening this until the front end of this tire rack is level. Now, I'm not going to show the other side getting constructed, but I build it in the exact same way. Even the measurements are all the same. So there it is. Four car tires on and two trailer tires and it's all leveled off. Now just to make sure that the door still opens, although there's no real reason why it wouldn't. There you go. Door can open and the tires are up and out of the way so that I could make more room for other things in the garage. So once I put the tires on, it did sort of start flexing the front end down as the rope kind of tightened up. So then you just take the adjustable connector piece and crank it down a little bit more until everything's level. So there you go. Four tires, two trailer tires, no problem. And really I only used about two and a half two by fours to do this and I took a couple back to Home Depot. There's one more thing I did just to increase the safety because I don't want those tires dropping on people's head and that's just take some of this old rock climbing webbing. Basically I just tied the center of the webbing to the center board and then put two strands up and over the roof trusses, came back, tied it back to itself, then took the webbing out to the corner eyelets as well and this will prevent the wheels from rolling forward even if they get hit by something and it'll give added support in case someone tries to use it as a chin-up bar or something ridiculous. 
Anyway, I got everything off the floor and made a lot more space in my garage. Thanks for checking out my video. Don't forget to like and subscribe.